Hi. Can you hear? Okay, well, I'm going to get going. I'm assuming that everyone can hear me. I can't. Uh, uh, hang on a sec. There's. Okay, great. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate that uh, that message. So, so welcome everyone. Welcome let's everyone. Uh, let's, let's get going, uh, and uh, get going. I'll, uh, I'll. Yeah. yeah. So, so, how are we going to do, do it for this, for this uh, half, half hour session? I'm going, I'm going to, to give a rundown, run uh, first of all, of myself, my organisation, a bit about the book, then hand yeah. over to Kendra Hill. My uh, co author, oh, yeah, Kendra Hill, have 10 minutes to uh, yeah, go, through, go through some aspects, aspects as well. well. Then we'll take, take the final, final, final 10, 10 minutes, minutes as a uh, yeah. bit of a question, question uh, answer session, session discussion, that, that, that sort of thing. Okay, hey, hey, so. so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so, a bit about myself. I'm. Uh, I'm uh, I'm a food, food microbiologist who has particular, particular interest and expertise in uh, food, uh, food, uh, food spoilage, food quality, quality so microbial food, food spoilage, uh, shelf life shelf extension, extension and, and food, food preservation, food those, 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 those sorts of areas. But I was but originally, originally trained uh, in, uh, in uh, clinical microbiology with a veterinary, veterinary emphasis, emphasis actually. actually. Ah, okay. Okay, hopefully that's all, hopefully that's all better. Uh, now, yeah, for my postdoc, I, sorry, my PhD was at uh, RMIT, uh, um, hang on, what have I, oh yeah, my PhD was at Melbourne Uni, sorry, where I looked at long life, long life dairy products and uh, spoilage of those, especially UHT milk and, uh, and that sort of thing, characterising the spoilage process. Then my post I went to RMIT where I was doing a range of, range of different projects. Some of them were product development based, working with uh, some key uh, key uh, Australian brands and, and companies, uh, as, uh, as well as some uh, processing, troubleshooting, that sort of thing. So looking at, uh, looking at uh, shelf life stability issues and how that's related to uh, things that these uh, organisations are doing in their processing and what they can change and, and, uh, and that sort of area. So my my uh, focus now is as an independent uh, independent food scientist running my own organization food microbiology academy and so essentially operating as a, as a freelancer where i do uh, consulting to food manufacturing industry uh, some tutoring to uh, students of, of all levels so secondary school right through to uh, right through to research students as well as some uh, contract and collaborative research uh, as well. So all of those types of areas with, a, with, an, with an emphasis on, uh, on, on uh, food uh, quality, food uh, spoilage, but also a bit of food safety. And, and also, I also actually do undertake uh, uh, various projects in different areas of food product development uh, as well. So not only the shelf life extension aspect, but, but uh, you know, the whole box and dice, so to speak, of the, uh, of the process. So, so this book, so it's a concise reference guide to product development of food and it came about after I put together a talk uh, back Seven seven years ago, actually, on on uh, on the same topic, so using the same uh, using the same uh, uh, title, and with so many people these days, or you know, currently because of the pandemic, 
at home, a lot of people are turning to uh, like exploring uh, in the kitchen and their kitchen creativity and those, those sorts of areas. And as people do that, they might start to have an idea about uh, actually commercialising uh, their you know, favourite home cooked dish and that sort of thing and uh, selling it, um, establishing a food business and, and that sort of area. So that's, that's where this, this book's meant to come in really where we uh or in the first part the first part section one is on the principles of food product development and that's that's uh that's what i'm that's what i wrote about so covering the four phases of strategy development uh first of all so the the background uh you know market research pricing supply chain uh you know, understanding those those uh basic um so-called uh um, you know, desktop research type type aspects. Uh, then the de design and the development of the food is this, is the second phase where you actually get in the kitchen, uh, get in the kitchen, get in the pilot plant, and uh, um, or the or the lab and try try out some uh, formulations and those those sorts of things. Then once you've gone gone through that stage, then you go on to uh, actual commercialization so then you know, you're scaling up looking at manufacturing facilities and uh, doing all of the aspects that you need to do to get your product out on the market in terms of legal regulatory and uh, so labeling and uh, nutrition information and, and those sorts of areas then uh, then comes the actual launch part where you've got a lot of marketing involved and those sorts of things and and post-launch as well uh, is the is the final phase. So it's important you know, not to just cut off your process and uh, you know once you've got your product out there, that's it, and you're you, know, you think you can relax and that sort of thing. So the post-launch is of vital importance as well. And what I've been what I've been telling people, uh, so clients that I've got is actually you know startup clients is actually to run. R&D, run your R&D uh, activities right from the start. So, you know, you're essentially getting your, pro your uh, product out there, you know, your first generation product on, uh, uh, you know, simultaneously with starting your R&D activities to improve and look at your uh, you know, second generation, third generation and, and that sort of thing. So it's really... Uh, Really important, I think, just to do that and keep ahead of keep ahead of trends. Or uh, you know, ideally, you uh, you know you want to be the one to be leading the trends to uh, um, you know ensure that your uh, remain your business remains uh, you know at the forefront and profitable. Uh, so yeah, that's that that's a bit of a background on uh, me, my organisation, and how how the book came about and who it's for and the sort of uh, Aspects that it covers and uh, and how it can best be used. Now it's uh, ten past. I'll pass over to uh, over to your Kendra, who uh, can uh, go through his aspect. So, your Kendra, over to you. Hi. Can uh, can you hear me, please? Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, thanks, Philip. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Philip has given a good introduction of the book and how it came uh, to uh, the writing part. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. Um, uh, I'm a food science graduate uh, uh, from RMIT oh. University. I finished my PhD in 2017. Uh, 
I'm originally from Nepal and uh, uh, I finished my undergraduate in food technology in 2000. After that, I worked in uh, government of Nepal in different portfolio. Uh, basically, I used to uh, work as a, a food research officer, mainly in food product development, quality control, and uh, analysis of different food products. Uh, after my PhD, I started working in uh, different uh, organizations, uh, such as uh, I worked in Deakin University, uh, as well as uh, uh, in uh, Department of uh, Primary Industries in New South Wales government. Uh, currently, I'm uh, with a food industry, uh, mainly working in uh, omega-3 powder and uh, nutritional formula. Uh, this book, uh, the second part, I have uh, mainly uh, given an overview of three uh, products, the jam, uh, pickle and uh, the dumpling technology, uh, mainly uh, how uh, the ingredient selection and what is the role of the different ingredients and how the um, preparation method works and uh, uh, what are the market uh, driver for the products, uh, etc. are provided in considerable detail and the uh, manufacturing process is explained in uh, stepwise in a flow chart basis so that it can be uh, replicated in any home kitchen uh, and it can be commercialized uh, in the future for the commercialization aspect as philip has already mentioned uh, he has uh, given an overview of all the product formulation uh, part, uh, the basic principles of how product development works and uh, uh, how uh, quality control principle works, how the sensory analysis part works and uh, what are their uh, different stages of the product development all given in the first part of the book. The second part mainly deals with the technology aspects of uh, uh, only three products. I am thinking we'll be going to more products in the future in the second and third edition. Uh, and we will be uh, inviting maybe other collaborators to contribute in the uh, mainly in the technology of uh, uh, potential uh, products that has attracted or has a potential growth in the future in food industry. Uh, this is the only thing I have to explain and I will hand over to Philip. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, thanks you, Kendra. That's, uh... Yeah, that's basically our uh, wrap up. So of of ourself and our book and what our intentions are. So as you Kendra said, we're you know we're already uh, actively have started uh, looking at the looking at the the next edi edition and how we can improve on our on our first and expand and make it even more more useful from uh, from what it is uh, by. Uh, as as you Kendra mentioned, increasing uh, the amount of foods and then having additional types of uh, people with more uh, more expertise in uh, particular niche areas, 
to uh, come in and author, author particular chapters as well. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, this yeah, this one is a re really good, uh, really good concise guide to uh, to the process, and one in which you would you know find yourself continually referring to as well, referring back to as you as you go through your own your own uh, your own your own product development activities, and you, know, you can keep coming back to it as you uh, as you progress through with each uh, each section, and then as you have questions about different aspects, different uh, um, activities that you'll go through, then you, then at that stage, you can uh, enlist the, um, the uh, expertise of uh, particular people, whether it's a uh, food science consultant in, in general, you know, possibly to oversee or manage your whole process, or you could, you could uh, just talk to you know, specific people or specific expertise on uh, on on certain areas who can uh, guide you on on that. Yeah. So now I just want to open it up to everyone, everyone else. Then, and uh, you know, is there any any questions that anyone might have about uh, about us, our organisation, the book, uh, the uh, the process of how we. Uh, we went through the book, or uh, you know, any particular questions about uh, food product development in in general, or or uh, the specific aspects of uh, what what your Kendra uh, went through in his. So yeah, Kim, how do we how do we buy it? Well, there's not sure where I've shared the link. I know I've shared the link in a few places, but I've got an online an online store as part of my blog. And uh, and yeah, so it's it's already already up on there and already up uh, already up for uh, for sale on on there. Uh, it's uh, yeah. I'll just yep. I'm just going to type it in. Actually, very straightforward, very simple. It is just foodmicrobiology.academy. So, yeah, I uh, so I've been blogging on food microbiology for uh, not not too long now because I originally I oh, some uh, three three years ago or so. Three, three and a half years ago, I started uh, blogging on food science in general. Then I recently restarted in uh, you know, specifically in, in uh, food microbiology. And uh, yeah, at that particular uh, particular location. Okay, so well, any uh, anything anyone else wants to wants to add to the stage? You, Kendra, do you want to uh, elaborate on anything else regarding your uh, your sections or you or your uh, your products of uh, what were they? Jam, yeah, pickles in your uh, specialist dumpling areas. Thanks, Philip. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, in the uh, dumpling area, I have actually covered most of the Nepali style dumpling. We call this as a momo in Nepal and very famous everywhere in, in different parts of Nepal as a uh, staple food, as a breakfast or dinner or lunch item and it is becoming popular in uh, everywhere nowadays wherever nepalese community is uh, growing it's uh, popular and uh, we can find these products uh, uh, in melbourne also and uh, there are every year there is a uh, dumpling festival or momo festival in melbourne organized by nepalese community 
and uh, mm, and uh, um, it's uh, uh, like uh, uh, the products has a commercial uh, potential uh, it's still it's like uh, 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 just uh, from a home kitchen or for phone purpose only people are making the products it's still not available in the um, uh, uh, retail self like uh, the frozen product or something in in particular like uh, whatever is found in uh, Asian groceries for other dumpling products. Momo is not common in in grocery stores or retail market. So it has a high potential and it has a peculiar characteristics in terms of taste and palatability, etc. Therefore. I think that it's a good idea to start a business with uh, this uh, potential product. Uh, another is uh, I covered the um, uh, technology for um, uh, technology uh, for um, the jam and uh, pickle uh, products. Pickle is basically manufactured by fruits or vegetable of any kind and it's like a lactic acid fermentation. Uh, so it is rich in uh, probiotics and it acts as a, um, a taste appetizer and uh, uh, um, healthier products in terms of increasing our gut microbiota uh, and therefore uh, it has a high potential. Uh, there are different kind of pickle already available in the market, but uh, we have given a short snapshot of how it's uh, manufactured and it can be a handy tool for any uh, anyone who wants to enter into the food uh, manufacturing business. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Thanks you, Kendra. Now, I'll just... Uh answer the question that Kim has posed about uh, product development and you know basically what what's its future especially especially in Australia so I do think it will change and it's true there is limited uh, activities of that nature in Australia which is rather unfortunate because you know that means that people tend to be more oh, reactive rather than proactive in in this regard and and uh, you know there's certainly certainly not a lot of not a lot of resources put into r and d in general and and that really is a shame because it uh, you know it tends to stifle innovation and creativity and, and those sorts of areas and instead of instead of uh, you know, the food industry especially in australia being a, a leader there's certainly a Oh, I don't know if it's a if it's if it's a mentality, but it's uh, you know just just the way it's sort of developed, I suppose, in terms of uh, you know it not being not being a priority, which is which is uh, you know really really a shame. And digitalized, well, yeah, I was just the other day I was reading uh, reading a lot more into into three D printing of food, and so. That's you know such a such an exciting area, and the things that that could be done in in three uh, D printing, you know how it's the artistic aspects, how it's how it can be customised, and how cheap three D printers are even uh, nowadays. You know, I was reading some review website as well where the cheapest ones started uh, uh, started only only just a few hundred dollars. Admittedly, they're you know rather limited in what foods they can do uh and that sort of thing you know not not particularly advanced but uh yeah even 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 the advanced ones are uh you know only a matter of uh, a few thousand as well and 
considering what you can do in terms of, uh, you know, considering what that can do, what a 3D printer can do with, uh, with food, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's amazing, amazing potential in that. And, uh, uh, yeah, amazing, uh, you know, developments for the future in, in that particular area. Uh, you know, specifically. So I just, uh, I just think that, uh, yeah, the food pro food product development professionals and uh, and uh, R and D people, you know, really need to be, uh, you know, rapidly rethinking and and uh, you know, advancing with with all these particular aspects, especially the especially the three D printing, because uh, you know. What what that can do is really just very, uh, you know, it's so innovative and so creative, and not to mention the amount of, uh, uh, you know, if we're going back to uh, traditional food preservation uh, you know, aspects. The amount of food preservation uh, approaches is uh, also so very uh, you know, diverse. Unfortunately, not not a lot of them are. Uh, you know, accepted by the by the general public. That's that's sort of an ongoing issue with with a lot of a lot of technology. But uh, you know, we're we're trying, I suppose, <laughs> you know, to uh, convince the convince the public of benefits and uh, uh, consumers. I mean, uh, you know, of benefits and uh, and safety and those sorts of areas. So no, there isn't, Kim. There isn't a chapter on. Uh, 3D printing of of uh, of food. That's a particular niche area, I suppose. That uh, I mean, at the moment, a relatively niche and specialised area, which we uh, which we uh, we didn't touch on. But uh, yeah, no doubt, there you know that will be uh, that will be incorporated into uh, subsequent uh, editions uh, for sure. Or we might even have a specialised book on. Uh, just on that particular aspect. Um, yeah, second edition uh, for sure. So, yeah, you know, I, I just think the the uh, future really is really really is looking uh, particularly bright, and especially with uh, food trends. You know, people are like food trends are positive as well. Yeah, there's so many uh, so many people that are in, interested in aspects of health and well-being and, uh, you know, s steering towards plant-based diets and, and those sorts of things and, uh, you know, um, uh, fermented foods and, and uh, probiotics and those, those sorts of areas. So people are becoming a lot, you know, so much more aware and those are really the booming areas and, you know, which is just great because those areas support, uh, support health, uh, you know, personal health, public health and suppress the so-called lifestyle diseases which are brought about by high uh, high sugar and you know high high fat to some extent but you know saturated fat and those sorts of uh, those sorts of aspects you know which lead to uh, like the disease um, obesity epidemic and you know, those those types of things so yeah that's uh, basically it from me, I think we're uh, according to my time here, we're one minute over. So um, I'll just ask Yekendra if he has any final comments uh, before uh, just asking anyone else if they have any, any questions they want to uh, um, ask. So Yekendra, anything else you want to add at this stage? Yeah, in case of uh, like the Kim's uh, question, like uh, there is any NPD uh, in limited NPD in Australia, not really. It's, uh, Australia is one of the um, uh, growing market for food products and there are lots of uh, new products uh, uh, development uh, going on in different industries, uh, mainly uh, in pan formula industries growing, uh, different uh, uh, processing, uh, mainly dairy tech and uh, cereals and uh, uh, legumes, all this um, uh, technology are growing in Australia and has a lot of um, potential for the future of uh, food technology, new products. Uh, that's all uh, I want to add. 
Yeah, great. I guess I was, um, just one final comment then, I, I guess I was thinking, uh, you know, from the point of view of how a lot of companies, food companies are, tend to be outsourcing, you know, not, not so much having their own in-house R&D uh, R&D departments, uh, and yeah, which is you know, which is which is great in a way, you know, um, because then uh, you know they outsource to various uh, consultants who you know, have a broader expertise, um, you know, from different working with different clients, different industries, that sort of thing, and they can you know bring bring a richness to the uh, product development uh, activities of a particular or R&D activities in general of a particular food company. Um, yeah, okay, so any, any last questions from anyone else? Uh, if, if not, uh, then uh, I believe, well, yeah, I've, I've posted uh, you know, my uh, uh, blog URL up there. Yeah, Kendra, do you want to put any contact details here uh, on this, this chat? So that people have easily got them accessible. I'm, I'm sure you know all of our contact details are in various places. But uh, if you want to post some something here, okay. If if uh, not, then I will. Uh, Thank everyone for their attendance and uh, yeah, look. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, you, Kendra. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, thank everyone for uh, coming along for their time and uh, yeah, please, please contact us. Please have a look at my uh, blog and uh, please contact your Kendra or I if you have any particular questions uh, about the about the book, about the uh, process in general, or. Uh, yeah, anything else you think that we might be able to help you with? We, uh, yeah, you know, are uh, all ears for you. So, uh, yeah, th thanks very much, everyone. And uh, we uh, look forward to touching base with you in the future at some stage. Bye, everyone. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for the, um, thanks for joining.